let's talk about guarding the law from being changed. In the Torah, we are repeatedly commanded to guard the commands, to guard and to do the commands, and to guard to do the commands. For example, Leviticus 19.37 says, And you shall guard all my enactments and all my judgments, and you shall do them. I am Yahuwah. So we have this need to guard the law, and part of guarding the law is guarding it from being changed. And this is what we need to look at in depth. Deuteronomy 4.2 says, You shall not cause to add on the word which I am commanding you, and you shall not diminish from it. To guard commandments of Yuhuah, your Elohim, which I am commanding you. So we are not to cause to add on the word which we are being commanded, and we are not to diminish from it. This is part of guarding the commandments, because it says to guard commandments of Yuhuah, your Elohim. Deuteronomy 12.32 says, All of the word which I am commanding you, it you shall guard to do. You shall not cause to add on it, and you shall not diminish from it. This adding to the law and diminishing from the law, there are probably some examples that are pretty obvious to us that this is what is going on. Law is being added to or it's being diminished from. One example of this might be the rabbinic enactments. Many of the rabbinic traditions either turn existing commands into things that very unlikely were intended to be that taken that way. So taking a command that is plainly said to be a certain way and then having a very creative way of looking at it, we could say, or adding in little caveats and exceptions to certain commands that weren't actually in the written Torah. So either of those cases and other examples could result in adding to the commands or diminishing from them. And also certain Christian teachings do the same thing. We're probably aware of, of groups that teach the whole law has been done away with and that either it's been made obsolete or otherwise just completely obliterated, whatever it's worded as, the end result is it's not being followed. And not all Christian groups will assert that. Some will say that part of the law matters now, but certain commands have been done away with. But once again, we know that the commands are not to be diminished from, that that is diminishing from the commands. But there might be some other examples of causing to add to the commands and diminishing from the commands that we may not have been as alert to in the past. The first thing I want to ask is, what is the difference between a tradition and a teaching. A tradition is simply a teaching that has been widely accepted. And so we may have thought that we were trying to follow the Torah in a traditionless way, that we are seeking after the written commands and seeking to do it without any traditions. And that certainly does seem to be a reasonable pursuit. We should seek after what the written Torah says based upon what it says. But in some ways, traditions are inevitable because we are going to be deriving some interpretation of how a command is supposed to be applied or what a specific passage means in the Torah. And so even though we are seeking to go after exactly what is written, inevitably we are paying attention to certain details and not paying attention to certain other details. This goes on 
basically in all situations, because we can't possibly take absolutely every bit of information that's going on around us into our awareness at one time. There are things we're going to think are part of the context and things that we're going to think are not part of the context. Effectively, this is not much different than a lot of the rabbinic traditions. A lot of the rabbinic enactments are based upon something that was said in the written Torah. It's just that it may be obvious they're taking something out of context or approaching it in a way we would consider unreasonable. But we are not just traditionless, even if we are seeking to follow after the written Torah. Now, traditions are not necessarily a bad thing, but they must be scrutinized. A tradition could be correct. It could be the correct teaching. But we may have inherited certain teachings that we deemed textual or otherwise biblical, and they may simply be a tradition that is not actually according to the text, at least not fully according to the text. So this is something to be alert to, and inevitably it's going to go on in some degree, probably no matter what we do. Obviously the goal is to know what the Torah says based upon what the Torah says, but traditions are inevitably going to arise in the teaching of that. And another situation that I think we should draw attention to is the issue of prophets. We may have heard people say that certain prophets have changed the law, that there may have been a legitimate change to the law. And yet, in other situations, a prophet may change the law and we don't even recognize it as being a change to the law. Now we already know, based upon Deuteronomy 4.2 and Deuteronomy 12.32, that the commands are not to be changed. The commands are not to be added to. The commands are not to be diminished from. And if we look at Deuteronomy 12.32, the immediately following passage talks about the issue of false prophets. And in Deuteronomy 13, verse 2, it actually describes that a false prophet may perform a sign and a miracle. So signs and miracles are not enough to prove a prophet as being true, because we very clearly see here a prophet could do such a thing and yet also be teaching us to do wrong. And at the end of the passage, in Deuteronomy 13.5, it describes what a false prophet is doing. To cause to compel you from the way which Yahuwah, your Elohim, commanded you to walk. So that prophet's prophecy is compelling us from the way we were commanded to walk. One of the ways we were commanded to walk is according to Deuteronomy 4.2, in Deuteronomy 12.32, we are guarding the law, we are seeking to guard it, and we are seeking to guard it from being changed. We are commanded to not cause to add on the word which we are commanded, and to not diminish from it. Any prophet that comes along is going to claim they have the authority to say what they're saying. That's inevitable. What prophet is going to say that they are somehow prophesying illegitimately? So any prophet is going to say they have the authority to do what they are claiming to prophesy. But if a prophet is telling us to follow some new command, that some new command was being made that we are supposed to follow from now on, that the entire nation is following this new system. Or if a prophet says certain commands do not apply anymore, are they compelling us toward the way we were commanded to walk? Or are they compelling us from the way which we were commanded to walk? A prophet that is violating this command 
of Deuteronomy 4.2 and Deuteronomy 12.32 that is teaching us to change the law, to change the commandments. Even if they claim to have the authority to do this, they themselves are breaking these commands in the process. And they are compelling us from the way which we were commanded to walk, to guard the law, we are not guarding the law if we are allowing it to be diminished from, if we are allowing it to be changed in those ways. And so this is something to be mindful of because it can go on whether we are aware of an addition to the law or a diminishing from the law. It can go on even if we think it's not we can have kind of a cognitive blindness about it because we might believe that a certain prophet must absolutely be true. For example, the prophets that come after the Torah and the Tanakh, we might accept just based upon the tradition of that collection of books that these books must be in line with the Torah and we won't even really think that much about it. Or we may have kind of looked it over and thought, oh, okay, it's like what I thought it was. It must be in line with it because we saw some things that were pro-Torah in the, in the process of looking at it. But the fact that we are assuming it must be true can prevent us from even realizing in the case that it's not. Because we may not even think of it as a change to the law. And we have clever ways that never underestimate the cre creativity of people in interpreting things. Because we can have very clever ways that we can say, well, it's not actually a change of the law if we try hard enough. And we'll cover our own tracks when we do that also. So we need to be guarding the law, not only from these very obvious cases, these situations that we were alert to in the past. But there may be other situations that we need to guard the law as well, to guard it from being added to or diminished from, whether it be in the cases of a supposed non-traditional interpretation, an interpretation that is supposed to be just completely separate from tradition, that may be an example in some cases. Or a prophet that we assume is teaching according to the Torah, or a prophet that we know is not teaching according to the Torah, but we assume it to be legitimate. So we need to be guarding the law. I think that our goal should be to try to guard the law as much as possible to guard it according to the way it is written, not according to any teaching. Thanks for watching. Be sure that you check out some of my other videos on other Torah issues, and feel free to stay in touch so we can continue this discussion. Thanks for watching. Remember the commands. Shalom.